Welcome back to another video. So, within my previous video, we have seen how we can transfer models from Blender to Katia. And this will be the case study. You can download the files over here on GrabCAD. I will leave the link in the description. So, let's take a look at the following model. If I'm going to open the Blender file, it should be this one. We're going to see that we can also change the surfaces. So for example over here we have this car hood and if you take a look over here you're going to see that this will be defined by polygons. If I will go to the wireframe it will look like that. And if I will go for example for the door, if I will right click and I will go to have this shade flat, we're going to see that this will change the visualization. If I will go to smooth it will look like this. When we transfer models from Blender to Katia, we're going to use STL5 format. And in this case, I will transfer the hood over here, as you can see it. And this will be the geometry of that uh, hood. If you're going to take a look at the number of, of vertices and polygons, we're going to see that this will be similar to that, but again we have the shading over here enabled in order to make this look a little bit different. If I will hide that and I will select everything beside that and I will export everything as an STL, I will go directly on my desktop and I will call this uh, custom STL. I want to include the selection only. If I will jump back to Katia, I will go to shape, Gita shape editor, and I will import, so we see the hood over here, and I will import the following STL that we just saved. For the scaling factor, I will leave this to 1000. If I'm going to click apply, you're going to see that the car model will be loaded like this. So if I will change the color, we're going to see that Katia within the shading will change that. For example, we see this front element of the car, it will look like that. Over here, the shading was not set and it looks like this. We can also have the possibility to increase the resolution of the mesh. If I will go to modify, I have the possibility to add a, sub, a subdivision surface over here. So this will be generally subdivision surface. If I will increase this, this will make everything look a lot smoother, but now if I will take a look over here for the wireframe, this will not change because this modifier has not been applied. If I'm going to go ahead and make this apply, now if I will go within wireframe, we're going to see that the mesh will be very dense now. But again, just like I showed you previously, we can change that directly from the shading. And Katia also does that by default. Now, regarding the reconstruction process for this, if you're going to take a look at the previous video, over here, and afterwards we can use quick surface reconstruction in order to generate that hood. Now, I will also leave a video in the video description regarding this. But let's take a look at how we can do some, manual, let's say, uh, manual modeling for this. So if I will go to Shape, I can go to Geometry Shape Design, and I can start tracing various sketches. I have some over here. For example, we see this one. This has been created right within the middle plane. So we have the plane over here. This will be the Y and Z plane. And if I will enter the sketch, I will zoom in towards the selection. We're going to see that this will be the following sketch. This is a spline. I can also enable the cutting plane over here. And we're going to see how those will be positioned. So we have multiple vertices. We cannot snap this directly over here onto the mesh, but we're going to take a look at a different workbench where we can do that. And we're going to see how this will end over here. Again, we can 
adjust that and uh, we can add additional points so if i will go over here spline i can add an additional point over here i can select it and afterwards again i can change that i can also change in some cases also the um, tangencies for each control point over here if i'm gonna leave that sketch that will be the middle plane and we have over here a curve on mesh so you're gonna see that the main difference between those will be that curve on mesh can be traced directly on imported str files that is not available within generative shape design but we can go to start shape quick surface reconstruction and we have the possibility to do a curve on mesh over here we're going to see over here that for the support i need to select the mesh in this case will be the hood stl and afterwards if i'm going to rotate within the viewport i'm going to see that i can start snapping various areas over here for example over here this will snap as we can see over there and afterwards i can position those curves so the main um, let's say advantage of this is that it will snap directly over here but as you can see over here we can also change the tangencies for example this one at the end we can do an invert tangency over here and that will look like this or we can also increase that so we have an arrow head over here and in this case if i will go all the way down the curve will look like this so within curve on mesh we also have this curve optimization checked that will smooth that um, output we can also display the curvature so as you can see over here we're going to have various curvature problems we can also enable the uh, deviation so in this case in various points we're going to have 0 0.1 millimeters and again for this point we can also do some changes so we can do the invert of the tangency it will be positioned like this so the main advantage of this curve on mesh is that we can trace this directly onto the mesh in some cases if i will just go with a 3d curve for example over here let's say that we want to use multi-sanction to define that profile i can start from the middle profile towards this one reverse the orientation if i'm going to hit preview this will be the output so we need an additional guideline over here in order to define the boundary of the, um, of the hood so i can go with 3d curve if i will position various points like this that will also snap over there so if i will click ok we're gonna see that this will be the position we can also change those initial points by going over here and now if i will move this a little bit uh, to the back the 3d curve should also update because that has been positioned starting from that point and we have the possibility to redo that multi-section the first profile towards the second one and if i will add this as a guideline this will be the output shape over here as we can see and we can do the same within um, this section as well over here we're going to have another curve on mesh we're going to see those um, curvature so we have this one the analysis for that result this has been traced using curve on mesh and if i will go and define this as the work object we're gonna see the following output over here and again i can go with a multi-section and do the following I need to adjust the orientation so that they will both be within the same direction but for this shape i will need some more um, 
3D cards over here in order to control the profile of the output over here. And as we can see over here, I added this 3D curve. So just like this one, this is a 3D curve. But if I'm going to zoom in, we're going to see that this will be added like this. So we have various curvature problems with this one. And since this is not traced within um, a 2D plane, it will be quite hard to position that. Over here as well. So we see those lines. We even see that end tangency that hasn't been added over there and in order to fix this we see that within CATIA we have those arrows so we can adjust that tangency but this is not the best workflow and again this snap uh, over there this is why I usually prefer to use imagine and shape in order to recreate complex models like this would because within the freestyle environment or the quick surface reconstruction, it can be a little bit complicated to have control over those uh, 3D curves that are added directly onto the mesh. So within a follow-up video, I will do the 3D model of this wood using Imagine and Shape. So we're going to see the workflow for that. We're going to start from a plane, and that will be a different approach. So, I hope you enjoyed this kind of content. I will position a similar video over here on the left side, and I will also add a subscribe button to the right. So, that's it. Thanks for watching.